Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Connect Center. Today is Wednesday, the 19th day of August. Man, it is hard to believe that we are right there. And so I've got one of the most awesome people in the world that's with us today. And if I can get this thing to do like it's supposed to, Jay, we can get you on TV. <laughs> it might be afraid of that. It may be. There you go. Hey, good morning. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm up really early sitting I'm, here doing your, your radio show. I know. And you know, <laughs> and here's the thing. Anytime that you, you've got guests that you want to bring in here on the Friday night, the Pulse WV Live, man, we will take a break and you bring your people in here and we'll we'll make this thing happen because I this is it. this is us. I have uh I have ideas. I just don't have uh, time. The time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, we're getting there. Yeah. Okay. Amen. God's good. So what are you up to? Well, we, um, for the last two closer. Sundays, get a little closer. Yeah, there you go. Like People here. Yeah, you. real close. There you like go. This. That's okay. it. So the last two Sundays, we've been, uh, we've been preaching a series on um, the still small voice. And, uh, of course, that voice is God's voice. And I think if there was ever a time in in our history where god's people need to hear the voice of god it's now it is and sadly that's that's not happening i mean i saw a survey on part and this is what really began generating my thoughts towards this series um i saw a survey on barna where um the majority i I can't remember the number right off my head but it was 60 some percent of preachers acknowledge that they don't even consult scripture anymore before getting in the pulpit. They buy sermons offline or they, um, the seminaries send them sermons or, or, or various different things. I'm not saying those things are bad. We all use reference material. Sure. Right? We all use references and we all refer to things. But um, I would like to think and I would hope to think that I'm when I step in the pulpit, I'm sharing what God has spoken to me. Right. And, um, you know, and, and in doing that, I'm, I'm taking that challenge of what he speaks to me and I'm diving into the scriptures. And, and of course, you know, I, I use a lot of different reference books and everything else to, to, you know, hone in uh, where I'm going to speak. But, but the idea that so many aren't even consulting scripture aren't even really consulting God anymore is is scary. And, you know, so I, I it kind of is where that sermon began. Go ahead. You were going to say. You, do you know that uh, that somebody told me the other day and it really alarmed me that there are there are people that will write within their churches, will write pastors sermons hmm. and will do that. And it's like, you know, I just I feel awkward about even the thought about that because man i love getting in there and 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 getting into the meat and potatoes of of knowing the voice of god and knowing what he's you know and allowing the holy spirit to lead absolutely because this bible study this you know the bible study that i'm doing you know just you know two or three times a week Mm -hmm. it helps me sure you know i'm doing it for me the you know the prayer also the prayer time that we have uh on um you know, every night, you know, it helps me. And so I'm just really encouraged about that. Now, here's what's amazing is that I I preached, you and I talk, but sometimes we may be on a subject of something else. And, and so when when you told me what you were preaching on, and I just finished up a series like that uh, up in Gasway, I mean, Jay, we've got to know the voice of God. Absolutely. And and it's like well, I, I told him, I said, you know, did, did the Holy Spirit tell you to go out and buy truckloads of toilet paper when the coronavirus started (laughs) right you know well and that's that's the thing and i think that's why because and that's that's where i was going with this is if we are if we are not being led into what god is doing especially by our leaders then we as as a church body aren't um aren't being led right in in the direction that we're supposed to go so if we're not hearing from God through our through our pulpits and through our leadership as as a universal church, sure. then how in the world are we going to live our lives 
hearing from God and allowing God to influence us and affect us in the things that are going on. And, and in today's time, it's, it's vital. I mean, I see so many people scared to death. And, you know, I'm not running around licking doorknobs, but I'm not, I'm not really <laughs> too scared to death right. of this thing either because I realize it's got to pass through Jesus to get to me. Right. And and I trust I trust in father. I trust in in his ability to work in my life and his leadership in my life. And if we're not if we're not being molded into that type of Christianity, um, then then we're in a very scary place. Um, But I think there's I think before we we really get to, you know, how God speaks to us and the things he speaks to us, we've got to understand why he doesn't speak to us. And, and I think, you know, in, in the first two sermons of this series, we, we've tried to hit on that. And, and last week, I told the church, very simply, you got to shut up. <laughs> you got to shut up. Um, and because you have, you've had people come to you, I'm sure, because I have a lot, come to you and ask your advice on something. Yeah. And, I, hey, I really need your help with this, Pastor. This is blah, blah, blah going on and everything else. And they never stop. Right. And for, so, yeah, for you to when, even when, the, when they yeah. get to the end of it, they're they're like, so will you, will you pray for me? I got to go. Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. I'll pray for you. Sure. And, you know, if we approach God that way, I mean, it's one thing if you're approaching your pastor that way. But if we approach God that way, right. God, here's what I'm worried about. Here's what I'm scared about. Here's what's going on in my life. And and blah, 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 blah. Yep. And we never take pause to be still right. and know that he's God. You know, Jesus, when he, and this is, this is kind of pulled from the message, Jesus, when he gave us the model prayer, he said, when you pray, pray like this. Right. And how did he open that prayer? Our oh, Father, Father, which art in heaven, right. hallowed be thy name. Right. So from the minute Jesus modeled that prayer to us, from the beginning of that prayer, yeah. Jesus set the tone of we're, we're here and and God's here. Right. And and we need to acknowledge that he's the one sitting on the throne, yes. not us. And in this just do you day and age that we live in. Right. We're we're so self minded and self empowered that I, I think we forget that God's actually the one on the throne. Amen. Not me, not you. Right. You know, not not the guy next door, but but God right. is the one. On yeah. the throne, and if he's going to help us, then we've got to shut up and and listen. Well, there's uh, there's one thing that that I've uh, I've learned in in just recently, and this is this is a shame that I've just recently learned. That there's a lot of times I will pray, I'll say, um, Jesus, I'll go right like that instead of me saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, mm. because that's really the mm. way Jesus said to pray. Yeah. And and then the rest of it is just open field, yeah. you know. And so I've changed my in in all the years that you and I've been preaching, and I've changed that thought process because I heard a, I heard a teaching on that, and I thought, wow, I've been saying that wrong all the time, yeah. you know. But that's where the power is. Sure. The, the power is, you know. I think what what people forget is that we that we have that power to be able. to, to through through Jesus to pray and the captives be free. Yeah. The broken heart be healed. Yeah. You know, because Jesus said, I'm going to heaven, you know, to prepare a place and greater things will you do. Yeah. You know, so I'm encouraged. I'm excited. I'm excited about what you've got to say. Well, I, I just think in so many ways we've become too smart. Yeah. And in this this do you society and, and generation and mindset of society that we're in now. Yeah. We, we've empowered ourselves to a place where we really don't belong. I mean, we yeah. really don't belong at the exalted place yeah. where, where so many of us see ourselves. And, you know, Jesus even said that, it, you know, or Scripture even says that it's the foolishness of preaching. Right. Right. Yeah. So what does that tell you? It tells you right off the bat it's not, it's yeah. not going to be about, you know, proving how learned we are. Right. You know, improving how smart we are and, and, and all of these things. But what God's really driving at for us is he's really driving us to a place where we're willing to listen right. and, and willing to hear his yeah. voice. Because you can listen and not hear, right? Yeah. Um, and where we're willing to hear. 
The Bible says, be still. Right. Shut up. Shut up. Right. right? You, you know me. I've, I've got yeah. a little sass. So I'm going to interpret that. Shut up. <laughs> and know that I'm God. And, and that know that I'm God perspective is telling us that we need to hear who God is, acknowledge him that he sits on a throne, and, and that he, he spoke everything we see into existence or everything we see evolved out of his speaking things into existence. Right. And, and you know, if he's hanging the stars right. and knows them by their name, if he knows the number of hairs on our head, you know, <laughs> I don't know that. I right. might know the number of he- yeah, hairs on, on your head, but it'd be, it'd be easy. It'd be easy on mine. <laughs> but I don't. I don't know the number of of hairs on my head, right? Right. So so why would I over talk that guy? Right. Why why would I why would I think I bring something to that table? That's good. Right. Right. And and so I think the greatest lesson we can learn, if we want to hear from heaven, is to just be quiet, be still, or or you know, if you need to be told that way, shut up. And and listen to, to what God is doing. Well, and what you're saying, what you're saying is is absolutely scriptural. And let me let me give it to you. Exodus Exodus fourteen fourteen says this. It says, "The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace." Yeah. You know, and right it, there, it just backs it up. Yeah, it's throughout scripture. So part of pr- so what you're saying is part of prayer is not saying anything. I think a big part of prayer yeah. is not saying anything. I think God knows our needs, and, and he tells us to bring our needs to him. Cast your cares upon me, for, for I care for you. So I'm not telling anyone to quit praying. Right. You know, and, and if, if we want to be foolish, we could interpret it that way. But but I'm not saying that. I think we need to bring our petitions to God, but we we don't have to. What happens is we bring our petitions to him, and we also bring our solutions to him, and then we want him to bless our idea of what the solution is. Whereas so, God would much rather we bring our needs to him and our cares to him. Right. And let him handle it. Do you think that a lot of people just don't even pray for God's will? Oh, they just I, do it. Yeah. Absolutely. They just do it on their own. They. Mm-hmm. What do you I, think the average, I mean, what do you think? And, and I'm just throwing out a number. <coughs> the average Christian prays less than two minutes a day. I've heard that for yeah. for years. You know, seven days without prayer makes mm-hmm. one week. You know, we've or heard that. Or as they're falling asleep in bed at night. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, what kind of relationship can you have with Jesus if you if you have that kind of prayer life? Well, I mean, think about it in in you know in the horizontal. Right. If if we have that kind of relationship with someone here, right? You know, I I mean, easily our spouse. If we have that kind of relationship with our spouse, how how good is our marriage going to be? Not you know. Good. Okay. Well. F- well. F- Forget that. Think about our, our work situations. If we have that kind of relationship with our, our coworkers or we have that kind of relationship with our boss, even yeah. how good is that relationship going to be? Right. You know, as, as co-laborers, sure. if we have that kind of relationship together, how, how, how good is our vision, our focus for the pulse going to be? Yeah. Um, and, you know, so I think if we if we look at it in that perspective and we realize. Yes. Oh, if if it's that important here. And right. it's a thousand times more important yeah, with th- God. Yeah. Do you think within within society today that we're that where we are today? Uh, I've been preaching, and and whether you you know agree or disagree, I think you probably would that we have some huge decisions that are going to have to be made. Mm-hmm. You know, number one, uh, you know, not to get political, are we going to are we going to be made to take the coronavirus vaccine? You mm-hmm. know. Do we need to pray over those things? You know, is it important that we do that? You know, is it important that we pray where our children go to school? Is it important where we pray to go to church or where we work or, or, you know, I mean, because the Holy Spirit can speak to us and tell us what we need to do. Absolutely. I mean, important things, I I think, should always be handled with prayer. Um, You know, I can give you several examples in my life where I did some really dumb things because I did what I wanted uh-huh. and and I didn't seek God's will first. You know, early yeah. in, early in our marriage there was a truck that I just had to have. Right. I didn't really consult a whole lot with prayer other than saying, God, you know, yeah, make this work and bless it. Right. You know, I didn't go to him and say, is this what you want? Is this <laughs> your will? Right. You know, I didn't stop and shut up and listen. 
for five minutes to discern what God was saying to me. I just told God what I wanted. Yeah. And wanted him and to bless so you. Yeah. And so which funny. basically was me realizing it was a really dumb thing. Right. But if I could g- convince God to get on my side, then it wouldn't be so dumb anymore. Right. Right. And so I bought the truck and it was dumb and it, you know, it was difficult uh, in a lot of ways in our marriage because of it. Um, n- not in, not in our you know, relationship part of our marriage, but in the financial end and, and so forth of our marriage. Right. It was a really dumb decision at that stage of you know, our early marriage to, to make that purchase. Right. Um, but I was convinced that I could convince God to make it his will. Right. Um, I also remember a time when I was looking to quit. Um, um, Sam was wanting to quit work. We had Luke. And, um, you know, our goal had, was to wait two years after we got married. And um, she got pregnant anyway, um, in spite of our efforts not to get pregnant. She got pregnant. God later showed us that he knew that for physical reasons, we would have never had kids if we we would have waited. But uh-huh. um, so we had Luke and we were at that stage. Oh, OK, well, you've got to go back to work. And um, it was a it was a huge burden for us. It was a concern for us. And um, so this was a time and a case where we we put everything on paper. We figured everything out because, you know, we're smart. Yeah, right. We know. So we, we figured it all out. We we applied ourselves to it and everything else. And and I prayed, well, you know, God, show us the way. Right. But what I did was I said, show us the way. And then I took over. Mm. I put everything down on paper. I made sure all the I's were dotted. I made sure all the T's were crossed. Right. And then when it didn't add up. Right. I was like, well, God didn't show us a way. So, you, you know, you. We're going to have we're going to have to go forward with mm-hmm. with what we're doing. And we went to work the following Monday. And I felt convicted. Huge mm-hmm. conviction came on me driving to work. It was that morning. It was almost like Jesus was sitting on the hood of my car giving me, you know, one Staring of these. You down. And um, so she calls me at lunch and she says, um, are, are you feeling anything about yesterday and our, our conversation, our decision? Everything else, I said, I have been so convicted all day. I don't know why. I said, you saw the numbers. You saw everything. It is what it is. And she goes, I feel the same way. Wow. And I shut up. When she said that, I shut up for a couple of seconds. Right. Which was long enough for God to wiggle in real quick and say, hey, 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 before you start talking again, tell her to quit. Wow. And And I was kind of like, Oh, I can't do that. Are you serious? Right. And and it was real. Tell her to quit. Yeah. And that, so I, well, let me finish real quick. Yeah. So I told her on that call. I said, "Go quit. Go turn in your notice." She's like, "Are you serious?" And I was like, "Yeah." And so, she, long story short, she goes, turns in her notice, calls me, tells me she turned in the notice, and I said, "Well, we'll just trust God." Right. My boss comes to my office door and says, "Jay, we need to see you in our office," and I'm thinking. Oh, my oh, gosh, no. <laughs> you know, and so forth. But what happens is I, I go into their office and where where the difference was in making our ends meet was she got really good insurance because she worked at a hospital. Oh, wow. And we were going to have to take a lot out of my check to to do that. And so they they tell me that they're picking up my insurance Isn't in the office. Awesome. So God already had God already had the problem solved. God, God already had the eyes dotted and T's crossed. Right. But he needed us to live and, and work in faith and hear him. Right. And what he was leading us and telling us to do instead of us telling him, okay, well, this is obviously your will because the ends don't meet. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, it's what I've been preaching in Gasaway about and what uh, this Bible study recently of Deuteronomy 28 2, talking about the blessings of God. You know, it says, in the new living translation you will experience all these blessings if you obey the lord your god yeah you know so it goes back to obedience and there's some people watching today and thank you for watching the pulse wv uh, live morning edition pastor jay mace of the winfield campus of the pulse along with myself john fowler good morning andy stout and kathy henning for watching today and danielle's watching Hey, guys. Good morning. Uh, yeah, Scott Thaxton watching. Uh, hey, Scott. Hey, Scott. Been a while, buddy. Yeah, Donna Parsons is watching. Kathy Cross. Hey, Donna. 
Anna Murphy's watching today. Uh, we've got some we've got some people. Ryan, uh, how do you say his last name? T H A Y E R. There. There. Yeah. Hey Ryan. How you yeah, doing, Ryan's buddy? Ryan's watching. So good morning. Good glad morning. To, glad to have you all uh, a part of it. If you have a question, feel free to go ahead and uh, let us know your comment. If you have a comment about uh, about what about what we're talking about today, but yeah, I'm right there with you, Jay. Do you think? I heard a man of God tell me one time, it was like a mentor of me, he said, if you pray 10 minutes, listen 10 minutes. Hmm. Yeah. So you think that's important? Absolutely. I, I honestly believe that we should, honestly believe we should begin with listening. Yes. Or pray in the middle and then listen at the end. Wow. Um, you know, because, and, and as I've matured in my Christianity, I've, I've done that more. Right. You know, I'll I'll go to God with the mindset of, you know, you know, God, what, what, what do you want me to hear today? What do you want to show me? What do you want me to learn, right. um, today? And and so I just kind of sit and you know maybe I've got some worship music on in the background or 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 maybe I'm just sitting there you know looking looking out at the sky or or whatever. But I just give him uh, an ability to to speak to me. I shut everything else off. Right. Except the things that have to do with God. Do you start with and praise? Do you do a lot of praise at the beginning? Um, yeah, I think I, the way I approach it is I acknowledge him. You know, right. Proverbs 3 tells us, yes. you know, in all your ways, acknowledge him. Right. And he'll direct your path. The problem is we're not acknowledging. Right. We're, we're going in acknowledging ourselves and, and again, asking for his blessing or, or asking him to agree with us and, mm. and, and everything else. and. I, I go into my prayer acknowledging him. God, I know you're here. Mm-hmm. I got I know you care about me. I know this is what your word says and and these are your intentions for me, the blessings that you want to give me. I know all of this exists because your word promises this. So, so I good. acknowledge you. I believe you're here. I have full faith and trust in you and confidence in in all of your promises. Yes. And where do you want me to be? And and then I and then I just kind of listen. And sometimes he speaks to me through whatever songs playing lightly in the background because I'm not a singer. You're a singer, so you can sing. You can I've pra- heard you sing. You can praise him, man. I'm not much. Of, I'm not much <laughs> of a singer, but even you're singing um, Jesus love. <laughs> you know. But um, you know, um, you know, sometimes uh, I'll, I'll just feel I'll just be sitting there in 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 his presence, and he'll he'll speak a word to me and so I always keep my Bible nearby and I go to to what he's speaking to me in the word and sometimes he speaks to me through through the word. Right. And and says, This is this is where I am, Jay. This is where I want you. And and I think I just don't think we approach him that way. I think we come up, oh, this would be a really great sermon series. So let me let, let me go put it all together and then I'll ask God what to he preach thinks. it. You know, yeah. I, I think I think we've got it backwards. I think we've got to shut up yeah. And and let God speak to us and let him lead us where he is. You, you know, one of the things that and, and I'm confessing here because you, you can ask. Good morning, John Sandy. Hope your day is going well, brother. We sure love you. And, and one of the things that I've given a lot of thought to is like, OK, the praise team, we get together on the stage. OK, and we're getting ready to pray. And here's what I th- here's what I tell people. I say, OK, we're going to now tell God what to do <laughs> right no, and, and that's and how we do that. it yeah and, and it's like it's it's kind of dumb and when you think about it and this is where really the lord's dumb. trying to help me uh, you know okay here's here's what i can say it's like lord i pray that you anoint jay today in the name of jesus well jay's already anointed yeah you're anointed whether you're in the pulpit or you're not in the pulpit yeah you're still anointed how dumb why do we do that well and and they think it's early Boy, you got to, you want, you want cream in that too? Yes. Yeah, yeah. A, little, a little cream. <laughs> yeah, got to got to thank Charlie here. Yeah, my Tom's dad, dad yeah. taking care of the coffee needs this morning. Yeah, my and since John Sandy's on, I thought I'd do my radio voice because John's <laughs> Mister Radio Voice. So hi, John. He, How are you, John Sandy? Um, so yeah, That's I'll quit so that. But That's yeah, so no, you're right. We, you know, but here's the thing: if I'm going to step into the pulpit, yeah, doing my thing, right, rather than God's thing. Yeah, I might not be anointed. So well, now you you're go. asking, now you're asking God to anoint what He didn't anoint in the first place. So you're you're asking Him <laughs> to bless what He hasn't blessed. Exactly. 
Yeah. And and that's why I'm saying from from from, you know, the top of leadership to our churches and congregations, I just don't think we're getting this right. Wow. And and I think we're creating a generation that doesn't hear from God or generations, plural, that, that doesn't hear from God. Thank you, buddy. Jonathan buddy. Moss watching up in uh, Glenville area. And I hope you're doing well, John. We pray for you often and uh, hope in Jesus name for. Oh, I'm good. I'm I'm really good. So Jay, Jay drink drinks that high octane stuff. I I yeah. drink the I drink the watered down stuff. Katie King watching this morning. Hey, Katie. She says uh, good morning to you. And uh, John Sandy says praise one hundred and one. <laughs> <laughs> That's so. Good. I could never do the radio voice like you, John. No, oh, but you you do something. You're, you're my idol. Uh oh, uh, I can get you an autograph picture. Can, can if you? you can you? For the garden. You want it. <laughs> <laughs> for the garden, that's for, keep the crows away. Right, that's for sure. So, when you're preaching this, what do you what do you think the response of the audience is, or what are the what do you what kind of uh, what kind of uh, feedback are you getting? Well, the response seems good. I mean, I see a lot of note taking. Um, I see a lot of response. I've I've had a lot of great comments um, the weeks following the sermons and, and whatnot. And and I think it's important, um, you know, that that we take it to heart. Yeah. And and respond to it that way and choose within ourself um, to not just shake our head and, and take a note that we never read again or, or, or anything at a sermon, but that we, we take the next steps to that. I, I think it's important, um, you know, that and, and if you're part of the congregation listening, I hope you're taking it to heart and, and taking that next step and acknowledging God, walking into your prayer with the idea that god's on the throne you aren't right. and and you're asking him to move and 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 speak to you right. in in ways that are heavenly i mean why why in the world when god sits on that throne yeah would i want him to bless something here right yeah. wouldn't i much rather him bless me with something that's heavenly wouldn't yeah. I much rather he move in my life or, or move in the church or, or move in circumstances and situations with the power of heaven? Amen. Isn't isn't yeah. isn't that where we're called? Yeah. Well, how in the world is that ever going to happen if I'm dictating to God? Well, it, 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 it needs to be the reverse. It, it, you're exactly right. And, and this is something that David Frampton told me one time. And uh, David said, he said, John, he said, you have to understand, he said, the supernatural is always in movement. Sure. He said, the spirit of darkness is always in movement. He said, God is always moving. And many times what he's wanting, what he's waiting on is for us to move. Mm. He's waiting on us to move. He's waiting on us to to, to move and to, to follow his lead. Mm. I, I just wonder if, and I've done this before, but I just wonder if you, if you go into a congregation and and the 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 countdown goes to zero, and you just sit there, and you don't say a thing, and you say, "Be led by Jesus this morning." What would happen? Mm. I've done that in Gasaway. Mm. I've done it. I've yeah. done it. It's like okay, you know, silence is awkward to people. Mm. It's not awkward to me I, mm. because I can ask. A, I've learned this. I can ask a question. Like, let's say, for an example, I ask you a tough question right here, and I ask you that question, and then there's silence. I can out-silence that person. Oh, absolutely. You know, just sit there and just wait on wait on the, the answer. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, so here's the thing. It's like I asked God one time, uh, and I was over in the, the house getting ready for church, and um, and I said, uh, I said, God, I said, I just pray that you do something big today. Do something big in the service. And and you know what I felt? You know, I really felt, I felt this. I said, I said, God, just, I pray you do something big. You know, it's like, why don't you do something big? <laughs> yeah. It's like, why don't you do something big today? You but know, I've equipped you. Yeah. You know? And I thought, well, you know, but it's all through him. Of course. You know, it's yeah, all through it him. It should be. But, he's, be. but he said <laughs> greater things. Yeah. You know, will you do? I mean, when you take that scripture, do you do you take that literally? The well, greater things, but, what but, you do? Well, but the the first part of that scripture is seek ye first. Absolutely, seek it goes back ye to first. It Deuteronomy twenty eight. Yeah, just shutting up. Yeah, and and being still and hearing the voice of God. And 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 the thing with God is, it's a still small voice, John. Yeah, He's not going to scream and shout at you 
and say, this is my will. Right. You know, he's not going to pound on the door, and he's not going to pound his fist. He's not going to throw a tantrum, and he's not going to do all of these wild, crazy things to get your attention. He's going to sit on that throne, and he's going to be absolute power. Yes. And he's going to say, draw nigh to me, wow. and I'll draw nigh to you. Right? Yes. It's, he's, not a, he's not a pound my fist scream so everyone looks at me and sees me kind of God. He's a still, small voice kind of God. And he's telling us to be still and listen to him and allow him to work and move in in our life and bring, as you said, the greater things. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and what all of these things, all of these things. will be added to you. So what yes. is he saying? He's saying, you know, I'm going to sit on my throne. I'm not going to leave my throne. I'm not going to leave it for you. I'm not going to leave it for the world. I'm not going to leave it for whoever's president. I'm not going to leave it for, you know, all of these things that we just, you know, drag ourselves down with every single day. Right. And so forth. I'm, I'm not leaving my throne, throne for any of that. Right. But, you know, you're getting caught up in all of it. You know, you're you're all caught up in this. You're all caught up in that. You're afraid of this. You're afraid of that. You're worrying about this. You're, you know all caught up into the the emotions of this and that and the other but i still haven't left my throne right i'm still sitting here not wringing any sands and and i'm not, not tore up yeah and i'm not screaming and i'm not shouting if you want peace i got it you right. want joy i've got it right you want blessings i've promised it right but you've got to you got to be still be still and know that i'm god and and come unto me. First Kings chapter nineteen twelve is uh, in reference to what Jay is saying. He says, "And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. Mm. And after the fire, mm. a still small voice." Yeah. And so, if you're going through something today, which I don't know anybody that's not going through something, right? You know, and if you're going through something and you're trying to figure out what God is uh, God is saying you know, to you, uh, w you know, listen to what Jay is saying to you today and what the word of God is saying to you today. You know, he tells us to, to be anxious, not to not to be anxious. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, God is God is not anxious about anything. Mm -hmm. And see, and the word Christ like means to be, you know, to, uh, to, to be a Christian means to be Christ like. So we need to we need to pattern and to strive to be like him. I mean, Jesus even said. John Sandy talked about this on the prayer time last night. Jesus said to his disciples, he says, can you not tarry and pray with me for one hour? Mm. I mean, you think about that. And, you, and we've seen the movies where, you know, he's he's praying in the Garden of Gethsemane and, and his disciples are asleep mm -hmm. and he's sweating and drops of blood through agony. Was there ever a time that the church was more asleep than it is today? Well, brother, I tell you what, I don't think you have all day and I don't have all day to get into that. But, you know, it's so true. I yeah. mean, it is true. I mean, it's like, you know, we, you know, we are praying. We are diligently, you know, praying eight o'clock every evening, mm -hmm. you know, and and I know people are busy. I know people have things that are going on in their life and I know that. And but what I am finding is I'm finding a pattern that it's the same people which you appreciate mm -hmm. those same people. But there's there's nothing being added to, you know, to that call, you know, of people being involved. And I'm talking about uh, I'm talking about where we can truly touch heaven. Is it the fact is that we're we're too busy or is it that we're asleep? Mm. I mean, is, is that what it is? Would abortion be legal if the church? No. Prayer would still be in school. Church, if the church wasn't asleep, this world would be a much different place. We have the battles that we have and the, and the fears that people are posting all over Facebook every day. If, if they were doing more than posting on Facebook and actually getting down on their knees and, and praying and seeking the face of God and all of this, the complexion of everything we're dealing with today would be much different. Yeah. And, and, and I'm going to be honest with you. I see a lot of these posts, and I used, I used to get caught up in it, right? I, I used to get caught up in it and, and everything else, and, and I still do a little bit. I'll share a few things that I think are important now and then. But for the most part, all the political stuff, I've just backed out because I know God has a plan. I trust his plan, uh, and I, I will stand, at, at the end of the day, I will stand 
with him and on his solid rock. Uh, no matter what the winds are, I'll vote according to how I feel led to vote and, and all that. I'm not saying I'm not voting or anything else like that. But I'm, I'm just not getting caught up into the, the world of Facebook politics because most of the people who, who are out posting everything left and right and, and some of it gets crazier and crazier every day, I, I, I do. I step back and I question, I wonder, I'm like, you know what, if we prayed that hard, yeah. if we prayed that hard, if we sought God's face that hard, if we acknowledged him, Right. If we shut up yeah. and and let him be God, would we even be here in, yeah. in this place and in this time um, today? I know he predicted it in, in Scripture, but he predicted it in Scripture. Why? Because of the hardness of man's heart. We didn't we didn't get here because God didn't care. Right. We got here because man didn't care. And, yeah. and and we're talking about the church when we talk about that. And and that's yeah. that's the sad state of where we're in. Yeah, I'm so glad that you you said that. It's a sad sad thing, but Christy and I were sharing that last night with each other, you know, that that, that the church, you know, and I'm not talking about, you know, it's the 80/20 rule. You know, 80 80 percent do 20 or 20 percent do 80 percent of the work Mm -hmm. you know 80 percent of the tithing you know there that's just the way it is you know and it's unfortunate that it is but you know kathy kishner said this she said i hear a lot of declaring and decreeing i wonder now is that the correct way to pray where your word says that i could have this that you would bless me here you know, she's saying, is that is that the wrong way or the right way to pray? I mean, we do have rights as Christians. Sure. And and I think I think we can stand on on the promises of God. He says his, his promises are yes and amen. amen. Right. And I don't want to get too much into that because I'm going to get into this week's message, uh-huh. which I don't want to do yet because the people haven't heard it yet. But, you know, at the same time. I, I think there to answer that question, I think there I think there is a, a level to which we we can declare the promises of God. And I, I pray that way a lot. God, you promised me this. But when but when I say this, this is, you know, blessing and this is favor and this is, you know, understanding. Right. And and these are the statutes yeah. that God gives us so that we see and comprehend and understand his will. Yes. Right? right. A lot of times we we do the declaration in our in our prayer by saying, give me that truck. Give right. me this job. Right. Give me these things, you know, and and we want it to be tangible. Sure. And and God doesn't always operate in the tangible. And I, and I think that's where we mess up. So do I believe that that, that we can pray and, and declare God's promises and God's blessings? Absolutely. Sure. I think the the error that we make a lot of times is we tell God what that is. Yes, because really in in what we should be doing is praying God's word. God's word and God's will. Yeah, yeah. God's will. Yeah. You know, Ricky Skaggs, um, you know, I followed him for, I mean, ever since he started, um, ever since I was a little boy. His son, he was actually going to... Uh,
So oh. y'all laughing. I know you're laughing. I can hear you in my spirit uh. laughing, so don't laugh at me. But in Romans 8, um, it tells us this. <laughs> this isn't my normal Bible, so it's a little different. Romans it eight. says, Romans 8, I'll start at verse 7. It says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, right? So right there it's telling us that what we think, what we can put together, what we can come up with, right. and, and the best of our fleshly ability is enmity with God, right? It means that we are immediately creating a division between ourselves and God if, if we come to God in our flesh and begin telling him what to do. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. If you're coming to God in your prayer, if you're coming to God in your day, if you're coming to God in your life, and and you're dictating to God how it's going to be and asking for his blessing, you've you've already created an enmity. And and it doesn't please him. Right? It goes on. Verse 9, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you, now if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. His meaning God's. You are not God's. If the spirit isn't dwelling in you, you aren't God's. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. And what that really drives home to us is that so often we're trying to operate spiritual things in the flesh. And, and Paul tells us here in Romans that that is enmity with God. Right. When, when we are trying to maneuver our spirituality, when we're trying to, to maneuver our place with God, when we're trying to move the, maneuver the vision of the church or, or the direction of, uh, of our life or, or what job am I supposed to take or am I supposed to move here or move there, when we start making these decisions and, and we're pushing the flesh into that, well, we're creating enmity. Our spirit, our spirit should commune with the spirit of God and it begin to direct us in the way that we're supposed to go. And go ahead. And in and, and the Greek of em, em, enmity, I always had trouble saying Yeah, enmity. Yeah, I always had trouble saying that word. Uh, in the Greek term of this, it's um, hatred and a reason for opposition. Mm. That's what the definition of that is. So you're saying that while we're praying, we're causing a division because of the flesh. If if we are in the flesh. Well, I think th- the way I said this in, in my message Sunday, and I might ha- not have this word for word, but the reason so many of us struggle hearing from God is is we're trying to do it in the flesh. Yeah. And if we haven't consummated our Christianity— with the Spirit of God and its power living and working in us. I mean, here in Romans 8, it tells us that if, if, we, if we belong to him, then the Spirit is in us. God gave us everything we needed at Absolutely. our salvation. The problem is we've been taught and molded to focus on that moment of salvation rather, rather than, than the sanctification uh, that takes place in us and, and the transfiguration that takes place in us from, from fleshly to spiritual. Absolutely. And, and we focus on all of these fleshly points of, of our salvation, and we never focus on the spiritual side of, of our salvation. So we're, we're not molded and taught from the beginning how sure. to spiritually approach God and allow God to speak to us. So what do we do in turn? Make it up on our own. We, we make it up on our own. We figure it up on our own. And, and I gave him an example Sunday morning. I put a picture up. It was a cartoon picture of, of a guy. I and, saw And that. you've seen it with the, the devil on one shoulder and the yeah. angel yeah. On, on the other shoulder. 
Right. And and we think we think that's how we're figuring this out. Right. Right. You know, oh, this is this is evil. This is this is not. And and we're we're using our own mind to figure that out. Right. Well, well, Paul just told us that's enmity. You know, that's garbage. It's true. You know, it's opposition and, towards and God. Because here's here's the thing. We all have a conscience, right? Mm-hmm. A hope. Right. <laughs> Some well, well, wait, hang on a minute. OK. <laughs> Did you have that conscience before you were saved? Yeah. Yes. You right? did, yeah. Yeah. You had a fleshly mechanism right. developed by what you were taught. Mom says this is bad. This is bad. Right. Dad says this is good. This is good. My teacher says this is good. So this is good. My preacher says this is bad. So this is bad. We had a concept in the flesh right. of right and wrong. Absolutely. Right? This is still flesh. This is still a fleshly conscience. Paul Paul, multiple times in his epistles to to the different churches, tells us that until we allow the Holy Spirit to lead our conscience and to overcome the fleshly will of our conscience. That's good. Then that is only when we begin to think and operate spiritually rather than fleshly. Because, yeah. see, we developed our conscience long before our salvation. In, in, in one round, I don't care if you got saved at, at four years old like one of my sons did. You, right. you still had a conscience of right or wrong. Right. Right? Yep. But, True. But, that, but that's still a fleshly conscience. Right. Paul tells us that we've got to give ourselves over to the power of the Holy Spirit in our conscience so that we're led by the Spirit of God. And not by just what we've been taught. Did you read verse four and five? Did you read those in Romans? Uh, yes. Not this morning, no. Yeah. When you when you I've read it a few times, otherwise. No. Uh, <laughs> well, I know you. Well, yeah. see, I was like checking something, and uh, I'm joking. Go that's ahead. so funny. In in Romans chapter yeah. eight and verse four, and I love Romans eight. I mean, it's yeah. just one of my favorite things. Uh, uh, Romans period. That the that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, mm. but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that walk after the Spirit do the the things of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And here's what my mentor, James Ashworth, used to tell me. He said the church is carnal. The church is worldly. And he says this, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Life and peace. My life is in turmoil. My life's a mess. How many times you heard that? My Time. life's a mess. And when you think about that, okay, stop being carnally minded. Mm-hmm. Become spiritually minded. That's what the word says. That's what it says. I love this part. Yeah. I mean, well, it's, it's a shame like the church is like that. It, it is a shame the church is like that. And and if if we're going to win in any way, shape, or form, we know we know Jesus wins in the end. Amen. Okay, but yeah. I don't think the church wins in the end. Right. You know, if you go to Revelations, the whole first part of Revelations is talking about how bad the church is and how much they screwed up. Right. Right. So I, I don't think the church wins in the end. I think Jesus wins in the end, and those that that akin ourselves to Him spiritually right. win with Him in the end. Um, but you know, I, I I I've heard so many times people saying the church wins in the end. Not really. Right. Not really, because there, there's there's examples in Revelations of, of the churches that didn't win right. and why they didn't win and right. why Christ has to come back and bring an end to all of it because the church isn't doing what God intended the church to do. So as, as we get down to the end of, of, of our conversation today, what is what would you, as you sum up the last two two weeks, what, what are you telling people at the end of this conversation? What do you What do you think people should do? to uh to move forward well i think first and foremost we need to be quiet we need to be still and and you know we need to understand where god is in this relationship he's on a throne amen you know he's he's not he's not here on earth he's not you know flipping through facebook he's not he's not doing all of the things that are normal to us every day right he's on a throne amen the throne the throne the the throne that will stand Absolutely. Above all overthrones. That's where God is. 
Hallelujah. And he's not leaving it for me and he's not leaving it for you. Right. Right. Or anyone else for that matter. So so we need to be still. Yes. And and know that he's God. Right. And and we need to begin acknowledging him and and allowing him to speak to us. Yes. Now, he's going to speak. He's going to speak through his word and and these are messages to come. He's going to speak through a whole lot of other things to us and in ways to us. But the only way we're going to discern that, the only way we're going to hear that and and Bible tells us that the only way we we understand right is is by the spirit. We don't understand because of of hours of reading books and everything else. We do that to study and show ourselves approved. Sure. Right? And so I'm not saying that's bad because right. people will, will take that out of context and be like, oh, you said that's bad. No, I didn't say that's bad. We right. study to show ourselves approved, but the only way we get understanding is right. through the Spirit of God. Absolutely. It's the only way we get understanding. That's Bible. Okay, yes. that's that's not my opinion. That's Bible. Sure. And it's awesome. so as we do that, be still and know that he's God. As we begin to allow him to take that rightful place, not only in the world, but but in our heart and in our life. Yes. And and we begin to shut up and, and be still and and bring ourselves into his throne room. Yes. Then we begin to look at things spiritually right. and not fleshly. Right? Start That's looking true. start looking at your life. If we wanna if we want to consummate our Christianity in, in the Holy Spirit, and, and I think we do because that's the only way the promises come. That's the only way the yeses and the amens begin to move in our life. Diligently Amen. seeking him, Deuteronomy 28. Right, yep. right. So the only way that happens is spiritually. It doesn't happen fleshly, no. right? I just read that to you in yeah. Romans 8 and, and, and what you shared, yes. right? So that only happens spiritually. So that being still process moves us in to, to a place and a seat Yes. Where we now begin to discern things spiritually. Right. And what I would encourage people to do is when when you develop your opinions on something, ask yourself, how did I develop this opinion? That's good. Did I develop this opinion because of a, of a conscience that that predated my salvation? Yeah. And it doesn't mean that it's bad. It doesn't mean that mom and dad's bad. It doesn't mean that. You know, your pastors when you were a kid were bad. These things that help develop your conscience. I'm not, I'm not saying that they're bad. Right. I'm just saying God's a whole lot better. Amen. Right? The Holy Spirit is a whole lot better and a whole lot more powerful. And yes. that's what we need to hear from. And yeah. that's what we need to develop our conscience from as we move forward. So wow, if we want to hear from God, we got to be still. To answer your question, we got to be still. And we got to allow ourselves to be developed spiritually rather than rather than just going on down the same fleshly road. Yes. Wonderful teaching. Man, this is great. Um, Pastor Jay Mace from the Winfield campus of the Pulse Church. Wow. What an awesome what an awesome thing. Tell us uh, in our closing moments here. Um We've got uh, Kelly Wayne is watching today hey, Kelly. and uh, up from up in Gasaway. Good morning, Kelly. And Kelly started a Christian school 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. And she started it because there was, a, job. Uh, yes, yeah. there was a need. And so Kelly uh, has other responsibilities with her parents. And so she stepped away from the Christian school and we rebranded it to the Pulse Christian Academy. Jay is the administrator of the of the Christian school and where we have one in Gasaway. I talk about this every morning on the mm -hmm. on, on the call, and here we are in the Connect Center in Taze Valley, West Virginia, and so we're moving forward uh, for Christian School here in Taze Valley. Do you have anything that you want to add to that, or tell people what they can do? Um, I'm thankful that that <laughs> as as part of this that that God has brought a lot of great people to the table. He really. I has. mean, clearly, I, I work full time, yeah, and I pastor full time, so. So to clarify, administrator is is really just kind of administrating. But yeah, bringing what you do. bringing people together and let them do the the important and and smart things and and uh, and and then you know ensure that it's it's guided by the spirit and Amen. and not our our flesh and our will and what we want or, or don't want. Right. Um. So you know th that's kind of how I see my job in this. But we've got. We've got an, uh, an amazing board, Kelly, that, that John spoke about, all of her years of, of experience and, and sacrifice and, and dedication to Lighthouse Christian School comes in. Megan um, Stout, who taught 
um, at that Christian school for all of those years uh, and everything serves on that board. My wife, who's worked in, in Christian school ministry for um, almost 18 years, yes. um, is on that board. Anna Miller um, on that board. She's um, also watching who's today. over 30 years of, of Christian school or teaching experience, not just Christian school experience. Absolutely. Um, but then uh, and then also Eric Sadie. Um, yes. And Eric uh, comes with a great perspective for us as, you know, he has kids in, um, um, he has kids in, um, has had kids in public school, private school, uh, Christian school, and homeschool. So he comes in with that experience, plus he's like a tech guru and, and you know, mm-hmm. is, is going to be vital to us as far as putting all of our tech stuff together. And there's other p- people, too, that w- that we're hoping um, as we move out of this COVID and and everything else that that they get involved that that we've talked to in the past and and whatnot but right now it's just not a good time for them so yeah. um so what that really means is we've got a we've got a group of of excellent people yes um put together um by god for for oh, us yeah. to endeavor in this and you know when god moves god moves <laughs> <laughs> and and it's it's yeah. it's overwhelming at, at times um yeah. You know, and sometimes you, you just sit down and buckle up because you yeah. have no idea where you're going and how and, and whatever. The, the goal wasn't to, to start anything in, in Putnam County mm-hmm. for at least a year, maybe more, if ever, right? right. I mean, the goal was really to um, to step into what Lighthouse had done right. and, and you know, switch everything to the Pulse Christian Academy and, and you know, put a good face on that and get accredited and, and do all of the things because you're working with, with Dr. Dan from Grace right. um, Christian School for, for a lot of that. And, and so the goal was really to, to do all of that. Yes. And we, we put no marketing out. We put nothing out. And next thing you know, we're getting calls from people in, in Putnam County wanting, wanting an option. Yes. And, um, oh, you know, it's, I'm it's excited. just it, it's exciting. Yeah. Yes, very much so. But I'm, I'm glad I know how to be still. <laughs> <laughs> and and shut up and and listen to God because right. um, it, it's a little overwhelming too. But y- you say all of that just to be real, yeah. Right? I'm not I'm not I'm not being derogatory at all. Just being real with you as a human being. Absolutely. But but at the same time, man, it is exciting. It is. And and it's exciting to see God move, and 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 to see that it's Him. Like I said, we Absolutely. we we did nothing to to market it or push it. I mean. Yeah, we we put a couple things out that talk about you know it. we've now acquired it and and whatever, but but that was it. Yeah. Uh, I think we put out a, a picture of the board, yeah, uh, as a welcome you know welcome to our board members and absolutely and something, and that's all we did, and that was on the, that was on the Pulse Christian Academy page. It was the Facebook and, page, um, and that was it. And next thing you know, man, we started getting phone calls and 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 everything else, and that and so, so awesome. we're we're excited. We really are. We've got amazing people. Uh, Anna, I, I know, is waiting on my phone call as I drive into work after I leave here, and right. and um, so she's she's been hard at work. I know, and um, I know, you know, Eric's been a, a big help uh, along with Megan and and um, uh, Kelly uh, as far Absolutely. as the the curriculum and getting that in place. Absolutely, and working towards um, you know accreditation within the next couple of years, uh, the timeline that we've been given. So yeah, all exciting stuff. Um, you know, and and a lot of amazing people. That's that's the important part. Is it takes you know, people. Yeah, it, it, it takes does. it takes people willing to hear his voice and and step into it. If you're interested in being a part of the Pulse Christian Academy, either in Braxton County or in Putnam County, uh, we do have an office number: 304-364-4370. 304-364-4370. three seventy. Three zero four three six four forty three seventy. Websites being worked on, and uh, or you can. Message uh, Pastor Jay or you can message uh, myself or one of the people that Jay had mentioned, and we would love for you to be a part of the Lighthouse Christian Academy. Now, we want to encourage you to go over to our uh, YouTube pages, uh, the Pulse uh, Winfield, the Pulse Gasaway. Subscribe to those pages. The Pulse Winfield Live. Oh, the Pulse Winfield Live. Okay, the Pulse Pulse Winfield Winfield Live. Live. And uh, go over there and subscribe to, uh, to the Pulse Winfield Live. We are also on Google Play, Spotify, as well as Apple Podcast uh, with this uh, with this program, as well as the Pulse WV Live on Friday. So we encourage you to take this uh, broadcast today and share it. Share it to uh, to your friends and continue to pray um, over people. Do you want to just pray a blessing over people today yeah, that absolutely. are that are listening, and then uh, we'll see you all uh, the next time. 
Father, we're just thankful and privileged uh, to sit here in, in a chair that, Lord, you've, you've appointed for us. And, uh, and God, we sometimes wonder why. But, but, God, we know that you sit on a throne and that, God, you're able. And because you're able to, to move and work and do the things that are, that are bigger and beyond us, um, Lord, we, we sit and we subject ourselves to you. We're thankful, Lord, for the privilege to hear your voice. And, Lord, we're thankful for the privilege to, to see how you work and how you move and the direction that you take us in. Uh, and, God, Lord, we pray for each person listening um, this morning. Uh, God, we know that you know. It's not important that we know. We know that you know their need. We know that you know their situation. We know that you know their, their uncertainty. We know that you know their fear. We know that you know, um, God, their struggle. We know that you know every detail of their situation. And so, God, right now, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we ask that you touch them, and we ask that you bless them, and we ask, dear God, that you make a difference that only you can make. We ask for victory in their struggle. We ask, dear God, that they overcome uh, the things that, that, that have a hold on them and that they struggle with in this life. God, most of all, we pray for their salvation and their ability to cast those things at your feet and to step away from them and to grow in their spirit and to step, dear God, into the call that you have in their life. God, this society says to just do you. Well, the only you for us to do is the you that you created in the womb. Wow. God, when you formed us and you created us in the womb, not in heaven and put us there, the Bible says that you formed us and created us and gave us everything we would ever need. All the yeses and all of the amens, you gave that all to us in the womb. Hallelujah. And so, God, we claim that this morning, knowing that you are the author and the finisher of our faith. And so, God, we pray that all of these people, wherever they are, whatever their need, whatever their circumstance, whatever their condition, we know that you've already given the yes. You've already given the amen. And so, God, we ask them to take a step back, to be still, know that you're God, and allow your throne to do its work in their life. Hallelujah. We pray for that blessing over them today. We believe in you. We thank you for the blessings that you're going to give us. We thank you for the things that you're going to bless this church, the Pulse, West Virginia. We thank you Hallelujah. for the things that our hands touch today. Lord, if it be in our jobs, if it be uh, in our families, Lord, if it be in the, in, in the people we talk to in the grocery store, we pray that you bless our hands work today. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, that you do a good thing in us. That others would see you, would not see us, but see you. Hallelujah. And we'll give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jay, thank you for being on the program today. It's awesome doing ministry with you. God is uh, good. God is faithful. Hey, thanks for watching the Pulse WV Live Morning Edition, and uh, we'll see you next time.